Chapter 1 The Lonely Mountain In a forgotten corner of the kingdom of Eldoria, there lay a valley shrouded in mist and mystery. The villagers called it the Hidden Valley, a place where no human dared to go. Tales of a powerful dragon living there had been passed down through generations, a creature of legend known as Draken the Lost. Varian's Mountain, known to the villagers as the Lonely Mountain, was a place of beauty and desolation. Its peaks were covered in snow, and its valleys were lush with green. But there was a sadness that hung over the land. The dragon's presence had driven away the creatures of the forest, and the mountain was silent save for the howling wind. For years Varian had lived alone in his lair, a vast cavern filled with treasures from battles long forgotten. Gold coins and jewels lay in piles, untouched and unvalued. Once these treasures had brought Varian joy, a symbol of his power and success, but now they were nothing more than a reminder of the life he had left behind. Varian had not always been alone. Once he had a family, a clan of dragons who fought alongside him in battles against humans and other creatures. They had been proud and strong, and Varian had been their leader. But a great war had torn them apart, and Varian had been left to wander the world in search of redemption. The war had been brutal, and many lives had been lost. Varian's heart had grown cold, and he had become a terror to those who crossed his path. He had destroyed villages, burned crops, and left a trail of destruction in his wake. But as the years passed, the thrill of battle faded, and Varian began to question his purpose. It was during one of these lonely nights, as Varian lay on a bed of cold stone, that he heard a sound that changed his life forever. It was the sound of footsteps, light and hesitant, echoing through the cavern. Varian's eyes snapped open, his senses alert. It had been years since anyone had dared to enter his lair. Rising to his full height, Varian spread his wings and let out a low growl that rumbled through the cavern like distant thunder. Who dares enter my domain? He demanded, his voice a deep rumble that shook the very walls of the mountain. A small figure stepped forward from the shadows, her face pale but determined. She was a young woman, no more than eighteen years old, with long dark hair and eyes that glowed with a fierce inner light. She carried a small bag slung over her shoulder, and her hands were clenched into fists at her sides. My name is Lyra, the woman said, her voice steady, despite the fear that gripped her heart. I have come to seek your help, Varian the Forsaken. Varian's eyes narrowed as he studied the girl before him. She was small and fragile, hardly a threat to a creature as powerful as him. But there was something in her eyes— something that spoke of a strength beyond her years. Why should I help you? Varian asked, his voice cold and distant. I have no interest in the affairs of humans. Lyra took a deep breath, her hand shaking slightly as she spoke. My village is under attack by a dark force, a sorcerer who has cursed our land. Our crops are dying and our people are starving. We have tried everything, but nothing has worked. The elders say that only the power of a dragon can break the curse. Varian's heart, long hardened by years of solitude, softened at the girl's plea. He had once been a protector, a dragon who fought for those who could not fight for themselves. But that was a long time ago, and Varian had lost his way, driven into hiding by his own guilt and shame. Why would you risk coming here alone? Varian asked, his voice softer now. Lara straightened, her fear replaced by resolve. Because I have nothing left to lose. My family is gone, taken by the sorcerer's magic. I couldn't just stand by and watch my home be destroyed. I had to do something. Varian was silent for a long moment, the weight of the girl's words sinking in. He had once been a protector, a dragon who fought for those who couldn't fight for themselves. But he had lost his way driven into hiding by his own guilt and shame. Perhaps, Varian thought, this was his chance to find redemption. I will help you, Lyra, Varian said, his voice firm. But you must do exactly as I say. The path ahead is dangerous, and we will face many challenges. Are you ready for that? 
Lara nodded, her eyes shining with hope. Yes, I'm ready. With a powerful beat of his wings, Varian lifted Lyra onto his back. Together they soared into the sky, leaving the lonely mountain behind. Chapter 2 The Journey Begins The wind rushed past them as Varian and Lyra flew over the vast expanse of Eldoria. The land below was a patchwork of green fields, dense forests, and winding rivers. From above the kingdom seemed peaceful, but Varian could sense the darkness lurking beneath the surface. As they flew, Lyra clung to Varian's scales, her heart pounding in her chest. She had never flown before, and the sensation of being so high above the ground was both exhilarating and terrifying. But she trusted Varian, and she knew that he was her only hope. They flew for hours, the sun rising higher in the sky as they traveled. Lyra pointed out landmarks below, guiding Varian toward her village. As they neared the village, the landscape began to change. The fields were barren, the trees twisted and gnarled, and the rivers black as night. The air was thick with the stench of rot and decay, a sign that they were nearing the sorcerer's domain. Varian descended, landing with a thud in the center of the village. The ground shook beneath his massive form, and the villagers scattered in fear but Lyra quickly reassured them. Do not be afraid, she called out. This is Varian, the dragon who will help us break the curse. The villagers slowly emerged from their hiding places, their fear giving way to cautious hope. They had heard the legends of the dragon who lived on the lonely mountain, but they had never imagined that he would come to their aid. An elderly man stepped forward, his hand shaking as he approached Varian. Is it true? he asked, his voice trembling. You have come to help us? Varian nodded, his golden eyes filled with a determination that had long been absent. I have, he said, but we must act quickly. The sorcerer's power is growing stronger, and we do not have much time. The villagers gathered around Varian, their faces filled with a mix of fear and hope. They had suffered for so long and now, finally, there was a chance that their nightmare would end. Lyra climbed down from Varian's back, her legs shaking as they touched the ground. She had been strong for so long, but now that they were here, the reality of the situation hit her like a wave. Her village was on the brink of destruction, and she had brought a dragon to save it. Varian lowered his head to Lyra's level, his voice gentle. You have been brave, Lyra, but the journey is not over yet. We must confront the sorcerer and break the curse. Are you ready? Lyra nodded, her resolve returning. Yes, I am ready. With the villagers watching, Varian and Lyra set off toward the dark forest that surrounded the village. The trees were twisted and gnarled, their branches reaching out like claws. The air was thick with the stench of decay, and the ground beneath their feet was soft and spongy. As they walked, Varian could feel the dark magic that permeated the land. It was a foul, twisted energy that sapped the life from everything it touched. He knew that they were getting closer to the source of the curse, and he could feel the power of the sorcerer growing stronger with each step. Lyra clutched a small amulet around her neck, a gift from her mother before she had been taken by the sorcerer's magic. It was a simple piece of jewelry, but it gave Lyra strength and courage. She had lost everything, but she would not give up. Finally, they reached the edge of the forest, where the dark tower loomed in the distance. It was a tall, jagged structure made of black stone that seemed to absorb the light around it. The tower was surrounded by a thick fog, and the air was filled with the sound of whispers, as if the very stones were alive. Varian growled low in his throat his golden eyes narrowing as he studied the tower. This is it, he said. The sorcerer is inside. We must be careful. His magic is strong, and he will not go down without a fight. Lyra nodded, her grip on the amulet tightening. I am ready, she said, her voice steady. Together they approached the tower, the fog swirling around their feet. The entrance was a large arched doorway carved with strange symbols that glowed with a faint, eerie light. As they drew closer, the symbols began to pulse, and the ground beneath them trembled. 
Varian reached out with his mind, probing the magic that guarded the tower. It was a powerful spell, one that had been woven with dark intent. But Varian was no stranger to magic, and he knew how to unravel its threads. Focusing his energy, Varian began to break the spell, his mind working quickly to dismantle the magic that held the door shut. The symbols flickered and the ground shook harder, but Varian held firm. With a final push, the spell shattered and the door swung open with a loud creak. The interior of the tower was dark and foreboding, the air thick with a stench of rot and decay. The walls were lined with shelves filled with strange twisted artifacts, and the floor was covered in a thick layer of dust. The only light came from a single torch that flickered weakly in the corner. Varian and Lyra entered the tower, their footsteps echoing in the silence. The air was heavy with the weight of dark magic, and Varian could feel the presence of the sorcerer lurking in the shadows. As they made their way deeper into the tower, the air grew colder, and the walls seemed to close in around them. Varian could sense the sorcerer's power growing stronger, and he knew that they were getting closer to the final confrontation. Finally, they reached the top of the tower, where a large circular chamber awaited them. In the center of the chamber stood the sorcerer. His back turned to them as he gazed into a dark, swirling vortex that hovered above a stone altar. Varian growled low in his throat, his golden eyes narrowing as he prepared to strike. This ends now, sorcerer, he said, his voice echoing through the chamber. The sorcerer turned slowly, his face hidden beneath a hooded cloak. His eyes glowed with an unnatural light, and his hands crackled with dark energy. So the dragon finally shows himself, the sorcerer sneered. I thought you had died long ago, cowering in your mountain. Varian's eyes narrowed. Your reign of terror ends here, he said, his voice cold and firm. You have brought nothing but pain and suffering to this land. I will stop you. The sorcerer laughed, a cold, hollow sound that sent chills down Lyra's spine. You think you can defeat me? He taunted. I am more powerful than you can imagine. You are nothing but an old relic, a reminder of a forgotten age. Varian growled, his claws digging into the stone floor. We will see, he said, his voice filled with determination. With a mighty roar, Varian unleashed a torrent of fire, the flames scorching the ground as they raced toward the sorcerer. But the sorcerer was quick, raising a shield of dark magic that absorbed the flames. The two clashed, fire against shadow, light against darkness. Varian fought with all his strength, but the sorcerer's magic was strong, his attacks relentless. Varian's scales burned, his wings heavy with exhaustion, but he refused to give up. As the battle raged on, Varian realized that brute strength alone would not be enough to defeat the sorcerer. He needed to outthink him, to find a weakness in his magic. And then Varian saw it. The sorcerer's shield flickered for a moment, a sign of vulnerability. With a burst of speed, Varian lunged forward, his claws slashing through the shield and striking the sorcerer's chest. The sorcerer staggered back, his eyes wide with shock. No, this cannot be, he gasped, his voice filled with disbelief. Varian pressed his advantage, unleashing a final blast of fire that consumed the sorcerer. The dark magic faded, and the tower began to crumble, the shadows fleeing before the light. Varian landed, panting with exhaustion as the tower collapsed into rubble. The sorcerer was gone, his curse lifted, and the land would slowly begin to heal. Lyra and the villagers rushed to Varian's side, their faces filled with gratitude. Lyra threw her arms around Varian's neck, tears streaming down her face. You did it, Varian! You saved us! she cried, her voice filled with joy. Varian smiled, a deep sense of peace settling over him. No, Lara, he said softly. We did it together. Chapter 3 The Protectors Return With the sorcerer defeated, the land of Eldoria began to heal. The fog lifted, the trees straightened, and the rivers ran clear once more. The villagers worked together to rebuild their homes and replant their crops, their hearts filled with hope for the future. 
Varian stayed in the village, helping where he could. His presence alone was enough to deter any threats, and the villagers soon came to see him not as a monster, but as a protector. They told stories of his bravery, of how he had faced the dark sorcerer and won, and how he had saved their land from destruction. Lyra became Varian's closest friend, the two of them spending their days exploring the forest, flying over the mountains, and talking about the future. Varian had found a new purpose, one that filled the emptiness that had plagued him for so long. One day, as they were sitting by the river, Lyra turned to Varian, her eyes thoughtful. Varian, do you think you'll ever go back to the Lonely Mountain? she asked, her voice soft. Varian was silent for a moment, his golden eyes reflecting the sunlight on the water. I don't know, Lyra, he said finally. The mountain was my home for a long time, but now I think my place is here with you and the villagers. Lyra smiled, her heart swelling with happiness. I'm glad, Varian, we need you here, she said, her voice filled with warmth. Varian nodded, his heart filled with a sense of belonging that he had not felt in years. The dragon, who had once been feared and shunned, was now a symbol of hope and protection. Varian had found his place in the world, and he knew that he would never be alone again. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Varian and Lyra continued to work together, helping the villagers rebuild their lives. The crops began to grow again. The trees bloomed with new life, and the rivers flowed clear and pure. The land of Eldoria was healing, and Varian was a big part of that healing. Varian had found his redemption, not through battles or treasure, but through the simple act of helping others. He had discovered that true strength came not from power or might, but from compassion and kindness. One evening, as the sun set over the mountains, Varian and Lyra sat together on a hill overlooking the village. The sky was painted with shades of orange and pink, and the air was filled with the sweet scent of blooming flowers. Lyra leaned against Varian's side, her eyes half closed as she enjoyed the warmth of his scales. Do you ever miss the days when you were a warrior, Varian? she asked softly. Varian was quiet for a moment his golden eyes thoughtful. Sometimes, he admitted, but I have come to realize that there is more to life than battles and glory. I have found something far more valuable. Lyra smiled, her heart swelling with love for the dragon who had become her closest friend. And what is that, Varian? Varian looked down at Lyra, his eyes filled with warmth. I have found a purpose, he said simply. I have found a place where I belong, and I have found a friend who has taught me the true meaning of strength. Lyra's eyes filled with tears as she reached out to gently touch Varian's scales. You have changed so much, Varian, she said softly. You have become a protector, a guardian of our land. We are all so grateful to you. Varian smiled, a deep sense of peace filling his heart. I have changed, Lyra, he said. But it is because of you. You showed me that there is more to life than being a warrior. You gave me a second chance. Lyra shook her head, her voice filled with emotion. No, Varian, you gave yourself that chance. You chose to help us, to be our protector. And for that, we will always be thankful. Varian nodded, his heart filled with a sense of fulfillment that he had never known before. He had found his purpose, his place in the world, and he knew that he would continue to protect and guide the people of Eldoria for as long as he lived. The dragon, who had once been known as Varian the Forsaken, was forsaken no more. He had found redemption, not through power or might, but through the simple act of helping those in need, and he knew that he would never be alone again. As the sun set over the mountains, Varian and Lyra sat together, watching the sky turn to shades of purple and blue. The village below was peaceful, the people safe and happy, and Varian knew that he had finally found his place in the world. Chapter 4 A New Threat As the months passed, life in the village returned to normal. The crops grew tall and strong. The trees boomed with vibrant colors, and the rivers flowed clear and pure.
The people of Eldoria were happy and content, their hearts filled with gratitude for the dragon who had saved them. But peace was not meant to last. One day, as Varian and Lyra were flying over the mountains, they spotted something strange in the distance. A dark cloud, thick and menacing, was moving toward the village, blocking out the sun and casting a shadow over the land. Varian's heart filled with dread as he realized what it was. The cloud was not made of smoke or fog, but of thousands of dark creatures, their wings beating in unison as they swarmed toward the village. Lara, hold on tight, Varian growled, his voice filled with urgency. We must warn the villagers. Lara clung to Varian's back as he sped toward the village, his wings beating furiously as he raced against time. The dark creatures were moving fast, and Varian knew that they would reach the village within minutes. As they neared the village, Varian let out a roar that echoed across the land, a warning to the villagers below. The people looked up in fear as they saw the dark cloud approaching, their hearts filling with dread. Varian, what are those creatures? Lara asked, her voice trembling with fear. They're shadowlings, Varian replied, his voice grim. Creatures of darkness, born from the blackest magic. They feed on fear and despair, and they will stop at nothing to destroy everything in their path. Lyra's heart raced as she realized the danger they were in. The shadowlings were unlike anything they had ever faced before, and she knew that they would need all the strength and courage they had to defeat them. Varian landed in the center of the village, his massive form towering over the people. Prepare yourselves, he growled, his voice filled with determination. The shadowlings are coming, and we must fight to protect our home. The villagers scrambled to gather weapons and supplies, their faces filled with fear and determination. They had faced danger before, but nothing like this. The shadowlings were creatures of pure darkness, and they knew that this would be their greatest battle yet. As the shadowlings drew closer, the sky grew darker, the air thick with the stench of decay. The creatures were like a living cloud, their eyes glowing red as they swarmed toward the village. Varian spread his wings, his golden eyes narrowing as he prepared for battle. Stay close to me, Lyra, he growled. We will face them together. Lyra nodded, her heart pounding in her chest. She had never been more afraid, but she knew that she could not let fear control her. She had to be strong for the sake of her people and for the dragon who had become her closest friend. The shadowlings descended upon the village, their claws outstretched as they swooped down to attack. The villagers fought bravely, their weapons clashing against the creatures of darkness, but the shadowlings were relentless, their numbers overwhelming. Varian unleashed a torrent of fire, the flames scorching the ground as they raced toward the shadowlings. The creatures shrieked in pain as the fire consumed them, but more took their place, their eyes glowing with malice as they continued their assault. Lyra fought alongside the villagers, her heart filled with determination. She had never wielded a weapon before, but she knew that she had to fight, for the sake of her people and for the dragon who had saved them. The battle raged on, the village engulfed in darkness as the shadowling swarmed over the land. Varian fought with all his strength, his fire burning bright, as he defended the people he had sworn to protect. But the shadowlings were many, and Varian knew that they could not hold out forever. As the battle reached its peak, Varian saw something in the distance, a figure tall and dark standing at the edge of the village. It was a sorcerer, the one who had sent the shadowlings to destroy the land. Varian's heart filled with rage as he realized what had happened. The sorcerer had survived their last battle and now he had returned to seek revenge. Lara, stay here, Varian growled, his voice filled with determination. I must face the sorcerer. Lara's eyes widened in fear as she realized what Varian was about to do. Varian, no, you can't face him alone. Varian turned to Lyra, his golden eyes filled with warmth. I must, Lyra. This is my fight. I must protect our home, and I will not let the sorcerer destroy everything we have worked for. Lyra's heart filled with sorrow as she watched Varian take to the sky, 
his wings beating furiously as he flew toward the sorcerer. She wanted to follow him, to fight by his side, but she knew that this was a battle that Varian had to face alone. As Varian flew toward the sorcerer, the shadowlings swarmed around him, their claws outstretched as they tried to bring him down. But Varian was relentless, his fire burning bright as he cut through the creatures of darkness. Finally, Varian reached the sorcerer, his golden eyes blazing with fury. This ends now, sorcerer, he growled, his voice filled with determination. You will not harm my people again. The sorcerer laughed, a cold, hollow sound that sent chills down Varian's spine. You think you can defeat me, dragon? He taunted. I control the shadowlings. I am more powerful than you can imagine. Varian growled, his claws digging into the ground. We will see, he said, his voice filled with determination. With a mighty roar, Varian unleashed a torrent of fire, the flames scorching the ground as they raced toward the sorcerer. But the sorcerer was quick, raising a shield of dark magic that absorbed the flames. The two clashed, fire against shadow, light against darkness. Varian fought with all his strength, but the sorcerer's magic was strong, his attacks relentless. Varian's scales burned, his wings heavy with exhaustion, but he refused to give up. As the battle raged on, Varian realized that brute strength alone would not be enough to defeat the sorcerer. He needed to outthink him, to find a weakness in his magic. And then Varian saw it. The sorcerer's shield flickered for a moment, a sign of vulnerability. With a burst of speed, Varian lunged forward, his claws slashing through the shield and striking the sorcerer's chest. The sorcerer staggered back, his eyes wide with shock. No, this cannot be, he gasped, his voice filled with disbelief. Varian pressed his advantage, unleashing a final blast of fire that consumed the sorcerer. The dark magic faded, and the shadowlings began to dissolve into nothingness, their dark forms dissipating into the air. Varian landed, panting with exhaustion, as the sorcerer's body crumbled to ash. The shadowlings were gone, their curse lifted, and the land would slowly begin to heal once more. Lyra and the villagers rushed to Varian's side, their faces filled with gratitude and relief. Lyra threw her arms around Varian's neck, tears streaming down her face. You did it, Varian! You saved us again! she cried, her voice filled with joy. Varian smiled, a deep sense of peace settling over him. No, Lyra, he said softly. We did it together. Chapter 5 The Final Peace With the sorcerer defeated and the shadowlings gone, the land of Eldoria began to heal once more. The villagers rebuilt their homes. The crops grew tall and strong, and the rivers flowed clear and pure. The people of Eldoria were happy and content, their hearts filled with gratitude for the dragon who had saved them. Varian stayed in the village, helping where he could. His presence alone was enough to deter any threats, and a villager soon came to see him not as a monster, but as a protector. They told stories of his bravery, of how he had faced the dark sorcerer and won, and how he had saved their land from destruction. Lyra became Varian's closest friend, the two of them spending their days exploring the forest, flying over the mountains, and talking about the future. Varian had found a new purpose, one that filled the emptiness that had plagued him for so long. One day, as they were sitting by the river, Lyra turned to Varian, her eyes thoughtful. Varian, do you think you'll ever go back to the Lonely Mountain? she asked, her voice soft. Varian was silent for a moment, his golden eyes reflecting the sunlight on the water. I don't know, Lyra, he said finally. The mountain was my home for a long time, but now I think my place is here with you and the villagers. Lyra smiled, her heart swelling with happiness. I'm glad, Varian. We need you here, she said, her voice filled with warmth. Varian nodded, his heart filled with a sense of belonging that he had not felt in years. The dragon who had once been feared and shunned was now a symbol of hope and protection. Varian had found his place in the world, and he knew that he would never be alone again. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Varian and Lyra continued to work together, 
helping the villagers rebuild their lives. The crops began to grow again. The trees bloomed with new life, and the rivers flowed clear and pure. The land of Eldoria was healing, and Varian was a big part of that healing. Varian had found his redemption, not through battles or treasure, but through the simple act of helping others. He had discovered that true strength came not from power or might, but from compassion and kindness. One evening, as the sun set over the mountains, Varian and Lyra sat together on a hill overlooking a village. The sky was painted with shades of orange and pink, and the air was filled with the sweet scent of blooming flowers. Lyra leaned against Varian's side, her eyes half-closed as she enjoyed the warmth of his scales. Do you ever miss the days when you were a warrior, Varian? she asked softly. Varian was quiet for a moment, his golden eyes thoughtful. Sometimes he admitted, but I have come to realize that there is more to life than battles and glory. I have found something far more valuable. Lyra smiled, her heart swelling with love for the dragon who had become her closest friend. And what is that, Varian? Varian looked down at Lyra, his eyes filled with warmth. I have found a purpose, he said simply. I have found a place where I belong, and I have found a friend who has taught me the true meaning of strength. Lyra's eyes filled with tears as she reached out to gently touch Varian's scales. You have changed so much, Varian, she said softly. You have become a protector, a guardian of our land. We are all so grateful to you. Varian smiled, a deep sense of peace filling his heart. I have changed, Lyra, he said, but it is because of you. You showed me that there is more to life than being a warrior. You gave me a second chance. Lyra shook her head, her voice filled with emotion. No, Varian, you gave yourself that chance. You chose to help us, to be our protector, and for that we will always be thankful. Varian nodded, his heart filled with a sense of fulfillment that he had never known before. He had found his purpose, his place in the world, and he knew that he would continue to protect and guide the people of Eldoria for as long as he lived. The dragon, who had once been known as Varian the Forsaken, was forsaken no more. He had found redemption, not through power or might, but through the simple act of helping those in need and he knew that he would never be alone again. As the sun set over the mountains, Varian and Lyra sat together, watching the sky turn to shades of purple and blue. The village below was peaceful, the people safe and happy, and Varian knew that he had finally found his place in the world.